If there's one character that I've always had a fascination in, it's Hellboy. The Hellboy universe is vast and grand, spanning different genres, faiths, and its mythos spans thousands of years, and with the recent announcement of the new Hellboy film, it's fair to say that there is a genuine curiosity for this universe. The Hellboy universe, however, can be a bit intimidating to jump into. Now, I've already provided a reading order guide in a previous video, so my goal for this video is to provide you with a guide for the different Hellboy universe titles. So if you decide to pick up one of these, then you know what you're getting into. It should be noted that you can jump into any one of these books and be perfectly fine since the books are set in the same universe, but they have very small moments of crossing over. Also, we're only going to be covering the main Hellboy titles in this video, so books such as Frankenstein and Rise of the Black Flame and other one-off graphic novels will not be included on this list since I'm planning to do a different video for them. So ladies and gentlemen and others, sit back, relax. This is Hardcover Reviews, and today we're talking all about Hellboy. The first book in our list is, of course, Hellboy. Now, the one question that I always get from fans is that they love the Hellboy movies that were made by Guillermo del Toro, so how close are they to the actual comics? The answer? Not even in the same ballpark. While I personally have a fondness for the two Del Toro movies since they were the catalyst that drove me to pick up the comics in the first place, they are in no way an accurate representation of the source material. For starters, the comics are much, much darker. You see, in the main Hellboy books, Hellboy is the world's greatest paranormal detective and the character was the result of Nazi experimentation in the occult in order to bring the Ord du Jahad, which is basically the equivalent of the beast that will bring about the end of the world. And while this is very similar to the events that happened in the movie, this is about where these similarities end. Furthermore, while the Hellboy movies are set in modern day, the vast majority of Hellboy's stories span from the time he was a child in the 1940s to just a few years ago. Perhaps the biggest detractor that I've heard from people that are first starting out with Hellboy is that the structure of the comics is far from the traditional format that we have come to know. By this I mean that you can have two issues of Hellboy that will focus on an investigation that happened in the 1960s and then in the same volume you can have three issues that focus on Hellboy in the 1980s. While there is a main continuing through line of a plot, it's oftentimes the smaller one or two issue arcs that will fill in the backstory of not only the characters but of the Hellboy universe as a whole. All in all, Hellboy is a title for people that love different kinds of folklore. The way that Magnolia is able to incorporate and change around classic legends such as the Crooked Man and the Wild Hunt is second to none, and if you have an interest in this universe because of the films, I say you owe it to yourself to pick up Volume 1. Just go in knowing that the movies are a shallow representation of what Hellboy is actually about. The next pillar in the Hellboy universe is the BPRD series. Now, the BPRD, or Bureau of Paranormal Research and Defense, centers around a group of individuals that used to work with Hellboy. After the events in the Conqueror Worm, Hellboy decides to leave the BPRD, and the series focuses on the aftermath of that. BPRD is a series that is meant for people that prefer a more traditional approach to storytelling. There is one whole story that is being told, and it's been ongoing for the past about 140 issues. BPRD is split between two giant story arcs, The Plague of Frogs and Hell on Earth, with the third arc, The Devil You Know, having just started. The thing that I love about BPRD is that it's a series that focuses and fleshes out a bunch of the side characters. These are the guys that in the stories typically die or they're cannon fodder. Characters like Liz Sherman, Roger the Homunculus, and Ben Daimio all get moments to shine and buyer beware, some of these characters that you end up falling in love with don't make it out all the way through. While we're not talking Game of Thrones level deaths, there are still moments where we lose characters and it still hits me in the feels. Like I've already stated, as a whole, BPRD is a series for those that enjoy more traditional comics and while the first two volumes are one to two issue arcs, once the story really gets going, it doesn't let up and at times it's even better than the main Hellboy title. The next book on our list is Abe Sapien. Abe Sapien is a title that I really enjoy, though I think that it may be the weakest of the Hellboy universe stories. Abe Sapien follows the titular character of Abe Sapien after the events in BPRD Hell on Earth that made him leave the organization. The Abe Sapien title is interesting because it follows Abe at the same time that the events of Hell on Earth are coming to a climax and an ending. Abe ends up going across the United States and travels to places such as New Orleans and California. This is a title that is more of a companion piece to the events 
that are unfolding in Hell on Earth, and like the rest of the books here, can be read on its own. However, if you do decide to read it along with Hell on Earth, you will enjoy it that much more. Now, if you enjoy classic pulp 1930s comics involving classic dastardly villains and old school storytelling, Lobster Johnson is the book for you. Lobster Johnson centers around the character of a pulp 1930s hero named, of course, Lobster Johnson. Lobster Johnson originally started out as a side character appearing in Hellboy Box of Evil, however, he was so well received that he ended up getting his own title, exploring his adventures before Hellboy was born. In the Hellboy universe, Lobster Johnson is regarded as a fictional character that was created by a retired detective, however, he was an actual person. This is perhaps the series that is the least connected to the overall Hellboy universe since it takes place before Big Red was even born. As a title, this is one of the more lighthearted and fun series where the bad guys are clearly the bad guys and the good guys are clearly the good guys. The last book on our list, this is a series that is tailor-made for those that love Van Helsing and Occult Detective. Witchfinder revolves around the character of Sir Edward Grey. Sir Edward Grey was first mentioned in Hellboy Wake the Devil, and since then he has appeared across most of the side Hellboy titles, usually to dish out some exposition or attempt to help out the good guys. Sir Edward Grey was a 19th century paranormal investigator, and the book Witchfinder centers around his paranormal investigations. Aside from maybe BPRD, this is a book that is perhaps the most important to the Hellboy universe. A lot of plot points that play out later on, especially in the events of Hellboy and Hell, spin out of some of the actions that happen in this book. And while at first he may not appear to have much of a connection to the overall universe, he becomes a character that has a great amount of influence in the greater overall events of the story. I know I've stated this multiple times before, but the Hellboy universe truly is one of the best comic book universes that is around today. The amount of titles and folklore that are involved in creating a cohesive story while at the same time not requiring you to read all the books to truly enjoy them is impressive. I hope this video was able to help some of you in finding out where to start with Hellboy, and if you haven't checked out my Ultimate Hellboy Reading Order video, I put that link in the description below. Guys, thank you so much for checking out this channel, I hope this video was informative, and if you want to support videos like this and oh so many more. Patreon is found in the description below. I do reviews, I do videos, I do live streams, I do a whole bunch of other stuff. Check out some of that other content. And you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Once again, guys, Patreon is in the description. That is how I'm able to fund this. I really appreciate it. And I will speak with you soon. Love you. Bye.